Hey folks, welcome into the News 12 Now Desk. Thanks for joining us here on this Friday, February 24th. We are taking a look at our top headlines, some of our biggest stories going on here in the CSRA regionally, even nationally, as we are getting into this weekend now. Beautiful week we've been having so far, by the way. Hopefully you've been able to enjoy that, get outside a little bit and take advantage of that. But again, we're taking a look at some of those top stories over on our website, some of the things you guys have been clicking on a lot. So we'll go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into some of those. We start off here locally with with Mayor Garnett Johnson talking about uh, a bill that was just filed that would give him an equal vote on the Augusta Commission. Our Sydney Hood breaks down what it would mean and what happens next. Right now, the mayor only votes when there is a tie, but that could change soon. This bill just introduced in the state Senate this morning would make the mayor's vote equal to commissioners. It's an issue we've seen over the years, and the issue most recently came up during the vote for EMS subsidize. One commissioner abstained to vote, preventing a tie, meaning the mayor could not vote to break it. So far, only five commissioners are on board for changing the way commission has operated for the last 26 years. But the mayor says this will allow for the city to grow and work quicker to provide better services instead of playing politics. We have all the challenges of uh, things that impact the health and safety of our constituents like ambulance service. Yet we're deadlocked on some of the simplest things. And uh, I, I believe that uh, this referendum, if approved by the voters or at least given to the voters, gives us an opportunity to make effective change. The bill requires a bonding referendum, which is just a fancy way of saying after state lawmakers approve it, approve it, Richmond County voters, you get the final say. That vote could happen as early as November, but before we get there, this bill has to pass through the state Senate, the state House of Representatives, and make its way to Governor Kemp's for signature. All right, thanks for that update there, Sydney. And when she said this morning, she meant uh, yesterday morning that was recorded last night. So uh, again, remember, we did have a situation where this would kind of uh, alleviate some of the problems that we had. The EMS vote for Gold Cross, uh, Commissioner Bobby Williams abstained from that vote. If he voted, it would have resulted in a tie, and then Mayor Garnett Johnson would have cast the deciding vote in this new scenario. We don't have to worry about any abstaining uh, because then Mayor Garnett Johnson has a vote, and we don't have to worry about that tie. So that that's kind of the, the point there to give him an equal say in what commission is doing. Well, driving around Augusta, you probably have hit a few potholes from time to time. Not only are they annoying, but they can also damage your car if you hit enough of them. Now, there's a way to have the city reimburse you for the cost of getting it fixed. The city's engineering director says you likely won't get reimbursed unless it was a pothole the city already knew about and failed to fill. So make sure they do know about it. If you see a pothole, you can report it to Augusta 311. Now, we have a link for how to do that up on our website, WRDW.com. City Engineering Department says potholes typically cost anywhere from three to $500 to fill. Engineers say they try to respond to these calls as quickly as possible after it's reported on Augusta 311. If we know there's a pothole, somebody call us. We try to look at that uh, within 24 hour um, or 48 hours and try to you know, get it fixed. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at how to, to fill or to file one of those complaints. Right here, we're on our website, WRDW.com. Let me come back to the home page. Scroll down a little bit here. You say, as potholes plague Augusta, what's the city doing? And it says you can click on this link right here to file a report. Let me do that a little slower. Uh, you can see right here, it says you can file a pothole complaint by dialing 311. You just click on that, and here you go, right here. It takes you to this site where you can go ahead and file that report. So again, if the city doesn't know about them, they can't reimburse you for any damage that's done. So make sure the city knows if you see any potholes, if you hit any potholes, report that to Augusta 311. And again, that link is on our, uh, on our website, WRDW.com. Well, from Jesse Norman to Lucy C. Laney, Augusta is rich in black history. The community came together to celebrate Black History Month and some local legends. Sarah Townsend says a celebration like this with singing and dancing was something she couldn't really do 50 years ago. We couldn't go to the lunch counter. You couldn't go and buy ice cream sandwich. And then sometimes they would let you come around to the back door to get that ice cream sandwich. Our children don't know where they came from. How are they going to know where they're going? I think if we could start teaching them that, some of this violence would stop. It would be more love because we have to learn to love and get along, and that comes from our history. 
Townsend says today's celebration, or yesterday's celebration rather, was a reminder of all those who contributed to Augusta and what the city is today and can be for the future. We also have a couple really cool Black History Month aerial Augustas that we just posted. Uh, we have Jesse Norman and we have Lucy C. Laney. So if you want to learn a little bit of history, we took the News 12 Sky Drone out there and we got some great video, some great background information, talked to some people who know a lot about uh, Lucy C. Laney and Jesse Norman. So again, our aerial Augusta, you can find those on our website under the Aerial Augusta tab. Golden Harvest had their groundbreaking ceremony for their new produce rescue center. Last year, they broke ground on phase one of the project, which included a new welcome area, volunteer experience center, and workspaces. Yesterday's groundbreaking was for phase two of the construction project, which focuses on the produce center. And the new building will drastically increase the amount of fresh produce, meat, and dairy items distributed to Golden Harvest partner agencies. The Alec Murdoch trial continues, and yesterday uh, we saw something we've been long wondering, will it happen, will it won't happen? Alec Murdoch took the stand to testify in his own defense. His lawyers said they advised against it, but Murdoch wanted to take the stand in an effort to clear his name of those uh, alleged murders of his wife and son, Maggie and Paul. Nick Neville has the latest from that. Mr. Griffin, I didn't shoot my wife or my son any time, ever. Alec Murdoch emphatically denying the murders of his wife Maggie and son Paul from the stand. But he admitted to lying about being at the family dog kennels the night of the killings. As my addiction evolved over time, I would get in these situations or circumstances where I would get paranoid thinking. Defense attorney Jim Griffin asked Murdoch why he continued to lie about this. You know, oh, what a tangled web we weave. But once I told a lie, I mean, I told my family, I, I had to keep lying. He testified that Maggie asked him to go down to the kennels. He says he drove a golf cart there, got a chicken out of the family dog Bubba's mouth, and then... I went straight back to the house, to the air conditioner. Murdoch says he discovered the bodies after visiting his mother's home. I saw what y'all have seen pictures of. So bad. He says as he checked the bodies for pulses, he got blood on his fingertips. One responding deputy described his appearance that night as clean from head to toe. Murdoch went on to contradict testimony from his mother's caretaker, Shelly Smith, who said she saw him carrying a blue tarp-like something into his mother's Almeida home after the killings. He also denied ever seeing a blue raincoat that was covered in gunshot residue. Never seen it before, never touched it, and don't know anything about it. And that testimony will continue today. The defense could rest their case as early as today, meaning jury would begin deliberating and we could be coming near the end of this trial. But again, Alec Murdoch expected to take the stand again. The defense asked if they could put his testimony on pause to question two more witnesses before going back. Judge Newman denied that request. So Murdoch could be on the stand as early as 930 this morning. And of course, we will bring you the latest updates in that. If you live in South Carolina and your driving privileges are suspended, you may have the chance to get back on the road again. Starting next month, the DMV is holding driver suspension eligibility week. To keep a lookout for a notice in the mail sent to people who might qualify for the program. And to qualify, you must have one of these types of suspension, either alcohol or drug-related conviction, driving or allowing someone else to drive an uninsured car, driving an uninsured car that the driver did not own, or driving an unlicensed taxi. South Carolina Senate has passed a bill that shields the identity of pharmaceutical companies providing lethal injection drugs for executions. Lawmakers are trying to resume capital punishment in a state that's gone more than a decade without carrying out an execution. Republicans say the reason the state hasn't been able to get the drug needed for lethal injection is due to pharmaceutical companies' fear of public pressure from people who are against the death penalty. At the South Carolina State House, the General Assembly is in full swing in its new legislative session, and one floor below, lawmakers are working and debating as Governor McMaster is early in his second full term as governor. Our South Carolina State House reporter Mary Green sat down with the governor one on one. Looking back at the uh, the last six years here, for you, maybe not what's been the necessarily the biggest accomplishment, but what's been the highlight of your uh, your time in this office? Well, one thing that I think has been very productive is that. Uh, the relationship between this office and the, uh, the, the whole staff here uh, and the 
House and, and Senate members is a very good one. Governor Henry McMaster will need to rely on that relationship with the legislature to accomplish his priorities for the year ahead. This week, the House passed a bill that would allow people 18 and older in South Carolina to carry concealed loaded guns without needing a permit or any training. The governor told me if the Senate passes that bill and it gets to his desk, he intends to sign it. I know there's concern about it, but I don't, have, I don't share those concerns. Uh, I don't think everybody's going to run out and, and buy a pistol to, to carry it around. I think that the, the people that will are the, uh, the are law abiding uh, citizens who know how to handle firearms. And uh, I think the, con the Constitution, the Second Amendment says you have a right. And I think the legislation is right on point. That's a lot of confidence that the folks who are going to get these, uh, get guns and go out are going to be responsible. Those, those aren't the people causing trouble. Anybody who's got a criminal record still got to go through that background check. The governor also wants to see bond reform legislation on his desk, saying South Carolina has a revolving door of repeat violent offenders. I'm asking the legislature to shut that door. If somebody commits a crime while they're on bond for the first crime, then they, they go back to jail, there's no bond, and they get five years extra on their penalty. More benefits could be on the way for veterans thanks to a push by Senator Raphael Warnock and a bipartisan group of senators. Senator Warnock is backing the Major Richard Starr Act. It's named in honor of a decorated veteran forced to retire because of combat-related injuries. The act would expand retirement and disability benefits to veterans who are not eligible. Senator Warnock says right now only veterans with disability ratings above 50 percent and more than 20 years of service are eligible for full benefits. This week marks three years since Ahmaud Arbery was murdered while out on a run in Glynn County. Last year, the Georgia legislature signed a resolution to make every February 23rd officially Ahmaud Arbery Day. The three men have already been convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the state's murder case and the federal hate crimes case. Yet Ahmad's family says they're still trying to get justice. They're still waiting for the former Brunswick District Attorney Jackie Johnson to be in court on charges of hindering the police investigation in Arbery's murder. Johnson was scheduled to be in court back in December. That hearing was delayed and the Attorney General's office says there has not yet been a new date set. It ain't going to help us none, but we want to know that People can own up to what they're doing right when you and our law enforcement system. Stuff like this can't keep happening. If you did it this time, who to say you're not going to do it again and how many times you did it before Maude? Johnson has denied any wrongdoing in the handling of Maude Arbery's case, but his family says they're a family of fighters and will not stop fighting until they get 100% justice. A, central, or a community in central Florida is mourning the loss of a nine-year-old girl and a local reporter killed by a 19-year-old just feet away from the scene of another crime. Spectrum News 13 says 24-year-old reporter Dylan Lyons was killed. Spectrum 13 reporter was engaged to be married. The deadly rampage began near a crime scene where a woman was found shot in her car earlier in the day in the Pine Hills neighborhood. Police say for some reason not known to them, the suspect returned to the scene, then allegedly went to a nearby home and shot a mother and her nine-year-old daughter, killing the child. The sheriff says the mother of the child killed and a news photographer remained at the hospital in critical condition. He also says the suspect knew the woman shot and killed in the car, but it remains a mystery why he returned to the scene to target the news crew and that mother and child. And of course, our thoughts go out to that Spectrum News family and that reporter uh, and his family, you know, being in this business, um, it, it hits a little bit closer to home. And so I uh, can't imagine what they're going through. And again, our thoughts and prayers are, are certainly with them right now. Let's end this on a happier note here. These big red boots look like something out of a cartoon. They're $350. And they've gotten some massive hype over the past few days. The boots were instantly sold out after seven minutes online. Now you can find them on marketplaces like eBay being resold for eight hundred dollars you can even find the plastic and rubber boots on influencers new york fashion week goers and even celebrities like little wayne and this is how i know i have no fashion sense because i think these are terrible and uh, don't think you could ever catch me wearing these especially for 350 dollars let alone 800 dollars. so uh yeah if you're into that though hey ebay 800 bucks maybe a late valentine's day present i don't know but 
Uh, you can find out about these stories and much more over on our website, WRDW.com. If you're watching this on our website or on our Facebook page, be sure to give our streaming app a, a download. You can just search WRDW on your uh, phone, computer, your Apple TV, your Roku, your Fire Stick. Just search WRDW. Give that a download. It is free, uh, and you can have all of our iTeam investigations, first alert weather forecasts, live newscasts, aerial Augustas, sports content, Murdoch trials, anything live streaming is all going to be on that streaming app. So again, go ahead and give that a download. It is free. So why not stay up to date in your community? Also, be sure to follow our new YouTube page. That's got all the same stuff. Uh, it's just short and condensed for you. So easy to watch videos right on there. Full length interviews with some of the people that we've spoken to, uh, especially talking about President Jimmy Carter this past week. So all of that is on our YouTube page. So go ahead and give that a follow as well. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. We will see you back here on Monday for the February 27th top headlines coming up on the end of the month. Have a good one.